You're now listening to the Wednesday Night AAF Podcast. Hot shot, hot Here are your hosts, the biggest Arizona Hotshots fans around, Nick and Logan. Hey everybody, it's Nick here at the Wednesday Night AAF Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at AAF Wednesday. This podcast has only existed for two weeks, and we've already had over 200 views on this beautiful podcast. That is an amazing accomplishment to us, and we will be bringing a lot of content your way this year. We will not only be covering AAF, but also the NBA playoffs and some special NBA topics. We might even delve into some no fun league this next season. We also had a ton of feedback from our listeners on how we can make our show better, and we have certainly listened. Last but not least, shout out to PewDiePie and Party in Backyard for our intro music this week. Subscribe to PewDiePie if Felix can have Logan and I on meme review soon. So let's get things started. I'd like to introduce first my sideshow, Bob, Logan Stringfield. How's it going, Logan? And what do you think of week three in the world of AAF? And I'm your co-host, Logan, and Nick here screwed the podcast up, and it was a massive failure. This is, we are recording part two right now. And what are your thoughts on uh, the week three of AF? It was a interesting week, nonetheless. Kind of like our podcast having to record twice. It has been a very interesting week for the AAF. I would say so. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get things started in talking about top news of the week with Johnny Manziel getting dropped by the Montreal Alouettes and there's possible talk of him going to the AAF with the San Antonio Commanders being the team to pick him up since I'm somehow the Alouettes of Montreal UCL CFL are the uh, that's That team is in the territory of San Antonio. Um, So it's... An affiliation type deal. Kind of like baseball in a way. Yeah, but they're not an affiliate though. Oh. Yeah, I don't know how it works really. Um, But because Montreal falls in San Antonio's region, I guess. um, That doesn't make any sense. uh, I agree. (laughs) Just like how Pittsburgh falls in Birmingham's region. Um, So, yeah. Uh, Thoughts on Johnny Manziel possibly joining the AF and joining the Commanders, nonetheless. You know, a lot of people hate Johnny Manziel, but... um... I'm all for second chances, Um, and I feel like this is kind of what the AAF is for, and we're kind of thankful that you um, messed up the first uh, podcast, because because we have this pretty big topic of Johnny Manziel. Um, Yeah, I'm all for it. I'm all for second chances. Like I said, this is a second chance league. Um, You got other guys in here... um, I forget what player, but there's a few. There was one or two players in here that had failed drug tests in the NFL, and that's the reason they're in the league. Um, it's all about second chances. Um, as long as he doesn't like do something stupid while he's in the AAF, I'm all for it. Um, now, I don't know too much about it, but was there any kind of stupid reason why he was kicked out of the CFL, or was it just kind of because because of play, or was it legal issues, or what happened? Uh, they didn't say. But their speculation had something to do with drugs. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess as long as he can pass a drug test going to play AAF, that's fine. Um, And I guess it depends on what really what drugs it is. Because let's be honest, there's probably a lot of players smoking weed and stuff. I mean, that's that's no big deal. Like, (laughs) the same guy that did. Harder drugs than marijuana. Right, 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 right. And you would hope he wouldn't be back on those harder ones, but being that he got kicked out of the CFL, there's probably a good chance it was. I- I'm all for it as long as he can pass a drug test. Um, Is he a liability? Yes, and that what that could be why the AAF doesn't sign him. Um, and what team would you say should sign him? 
Because I think that the commands I don't think, are perfectly fine. It would work. A, with it would Antonio. work. It would work with San Antonio, but he's not going to play with San Antonio. I don't see him passing Logan Woodside or even Marquise Williams. I see, really, ideally, the team that would sign him would be Atlanta. That's the only fit I see, but in all honesty, though, if I were them, I would I would go ahead and give a shot to um, Aaron Murray before I even went and looked at Johnny Manziel. Um, and he probably I mean, is going to demand a high price as well. Right, and he may demand even starting. Who knows? But um, I well, mean, I was I was reading on Reddit that there's speculation that the league basically forced Memphis to start uh, Hackenberg um, because of the fact that he is a second round draft pick. Right. Um, and he also said that if he didn't start, he wouldn't play. I mean, to me, isn't that a no brainer to play him anyway? I mean, I think. I mean. Yes, it's one of those issues where you think Mettenberger, you just play him because he's better. It's almost like the league forced him to like, hey, we're trying to help you out. Like, right? It's <laughs> like they're trying to keep the league competitive. Like nobody wants to see Hackenberg. Like no, nobody wants to watch Memphis because Hackenberg. Like Memphis is now more intriguing because Mettenberger is playing. Correct. Dude, in the first podcast we recorded, I said he's like a grown man out there playing with kids, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, he can take Memphis to the championship game. As crazy as that sounds, they maybe could run the table for the rest of the season. They look good in that second half. They win that game last week if they start him. Well, since we're talking about uh, the Express going up week three against the Apollos, let's go ahead and get right into that. Um, Orlando Apollos faced the Memphis Express in Week 3 action. Um, Apollos beat the Express 21-17 uh, after Hackenberg was actually benched in favor of Mettenberger. And Mettenberger looked <clears throat> fantastic. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, he was just dropping some dimes out there. I mean, what he was doing just... It looked like an NFL player out there. I mean, I'm not kidding when I say he's like, he was like on a whole different level from the like everybody else other than um, Garrett Gilbert. Like those two guys are one and two, and then you you have that you have that elite tier. Then you have that secondary tier that's kind of like um, Wolford and um, Luis Perez and guys like that. But those two guys pretty much have just, I mean, they're just a notch above everybody else. Yeah, and I would agree, and um, as you said in the first recording of this, uh, Gilbert probably would have scored an extra 20 points had Mettenberger started, and it probably would have been a an even higher score on the Express's side. Yes. Because like uh, you said, Mettenberger looked like he was playing with middle school kids. Yeah, and Gilbert was just responding right back. And I was trying to remember there for a second what I said in the previous podcast. But I believe what I said was if they would have started from the beginning, it would have up Gilbert's play because he'd been like, oh, man, I got to match Mettenberger. And this, these teams, it would have been like probably a 45-42 to 42 score. Like right. it would have been a shootout and one of the best games we've ever seen in AAF history. Despite it being short history, it would have been an all-time classic. Right. Um, and you can only go up. If you're Memphis from here, oh yeah, and they're they're zero and three, but they could easily end up seven and three. Yeah, yeah, I said season. I said run the table, win the next six games. I meant next seven, yeah. or or yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. seven. Because um, there's ten ten games. Season. Now the only issue is they're in the East, and they're literally going to have to run the table almost. Yeah, they're they are down three games when both Orlando and Birmingham are 3-0. and Right. So it's, it's going to be tough. Um, I think Birmingham could easily lose three games. Uh, I don't know about Orlando. You just you think that luck's got to eventually run out for Birmingham. Oh, absolutely. 
Um, and we'll go ahead and talk about the Birmingham Atlanta game. Uh, Birmingham one twenty eight to twelve against the Atlanta Legends, and in the first quarter, it looked like Atlanta was going to pull the upset because they kept driving into the red zone. The issue was is they all the multiple drives that they had uh, in the first and second quarter, majority of them didn't uh, end up with them scoring. And then the iron just blew them out. And when it wasn't the play of Perez, it was the play of Trent Richardson. With three touchdowns, <laughs> he's like, if I know there's fantasy football out there for AAF, he's like a legend because like he gets no yards, but he just scores touchdowns for people. Right, <laughs> two point seven yards per carry, and yet he still has three touchdowns. Is he gonna get a look? Um, no. After he's, season, no. The only people that may want to bring him in is. Uh, Teams that need a short yardage back. Um, maybe nah, I could see maybe a team like my Detroit Lions maybe going after them because we're probably not going to re-sign Legarrett Blunt, and that's kind of a similar type running back. Yeah. Except I don't I don't think he has the burst that Legarrett Blunt does because you know Legarrett Blunt can pop off like thirty to forty yard runs every now and then. Right. Um. I don't see him going back to the NFL. I think he's going to stay in the AAF for the next few years and become one of the legendary AAF players. The first player to be inducted into the AAF Hall of Fame. He's probably going to score the most touchdowns in history by not really doing much. doesn't sign him. (laughs) What if they do a trade? Oh, man. Um, So, talking about the Atlanta Legends, uh, Matt Sims looked really good at the beginning. He can't finish. He can't. Speaking of finishing, Nick, what about our sponsor, Blue Chew? Oh, God. Blue Chew is, you know what, you, you know what I use, you know what I need sometimes? It's Blue Chew. Blue Chew is an online subscription service that ships physician prescribed chewable tablets. Hey, if you want this in the podcast, I'm all for it. We'll see where it goes from here. I can't. I can't finish that. Oh, you can't finish it. So maybe you need some blue chew. I need blue chew. Um, Sign us, blue chew. Yeah. So ultimately, the Atlanta Legends only could score twelve points to the Irons twenty-eight. Um, do you think the Legends can win a game? Well, season. I was looking at. Let's pull up their future schedule here, and let's kind of look at. Um, Let's look at potential games that they could win. Um, starting with week four, they go to Arizona. That's a big nope. We the week five they go. They're back at home against Mettenberg, Mettenberger, and um, Memphis. No, Mettenberger ain't gonna allow them to lose to Atlanta. Atlanta plays week six against San Antonio, who doesn't look as good as they did earlier in the year. That's a chance they can win. Um, outside of that, I don't see any other chances. I mean, they, they'll have two shots at Memphis, but I can't see them. I think Mettenberger's going to help that Memphis team um, greatly. Um, I don't see another chance. They have to beat San Antonio or somehow knock off Memphis. I, unless they go to Birmingham and win. That's, that's a possibility. Um, well, I feel like anybody that goes up against Birmingham now, it's, it's ultimately a trap game for Birmingham. Right. Now, I will say Birmingham fans will probably argue, hey, we just beat them. But I feel like the game was a little closer than the score indicated because oh, it played tough. Yeah. Um, do you think that Aaron Murray will eventually get a start over Matt Sims? Well, here's the yeah, – that's and that's kind of the interesting thing is if Aaron Murray gets in there, is this team going to be better? Yeah. Um, their defense really ain't that great, but if he, he can get in there and score and keep pace with these teams, I mean, maybe they can win some high-scoring affairs. Hopefully so. I don't I don't want to see anybody go winless in the first season of the AAF. No, that was it's not terrible. Fun. Yeah. Um, 
So moving on, then we had San Diego Fleet crushing the San Antonio Commanders 31 to 11. This was a game that I did not see coming and um absolute stunner. Yeah, I had, I had a little bit of uh, some number transposing uh, when it was 22-8. And I looked at it, and it was like, <laughs> well, this game did not go anywhere. It definitely is going the way that uh, everybody thought it would go, and I thought it was San Antonio 22, San Diego 8. In reality, it was San Diego 22, San Antonio 8. And, and it... And neither one of us actually, we were tra- we were covering the game, but we weren't we weren't physically able to watch it. I know we had some things both going on Sunday, so we were both kind of following along in a different manner, and that's why Nick got confused by that. Is because I know I think you were watching the Oscars, and I was um, I forget what I was doing, but I was doing something Sunday night, so I was following along with Twitter the game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I kind of did the same thing. Well. I think you messaged me, and I was like, oh, yeah, they're dominating. And I was like, wait, Nick, the, um, the that's the fleet that's up. <laughs> right. Uh, so that's, um, when, that's when I tuned in, because I was like, you just wait. San Antonio is going to make a comeback now. So I tuned in late third quarter. San Antonio started to make a run, and then, it, well, it looked like they were going to, but it just never, they could never get it going. Right. Um, the commanders did not look like the team that they were week one and two. Even though they lost week two, they still put up... <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I dropped my bottle. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure nobody's getting slapped around. <laughs> it sounded to me like somebody was getting slapped. Oh, I was just uh, trying to find my blue chew. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah. So, San Antonio did not look like the team that they looked like week one and week two. And even though they lost in week two, it was still a very close game. And it took a pick six on, like, the 10-yard line for Orlando to basically tie the game against the Commanders. Yeah. I think that this team that lost to the Fleet, this is the Commanders? The Commanders are an interesting team, and I believe that they are a team that feeds off their home crowd. I don't think they're a very good team. But be, when they are at home, they have the best home field advantage in the league. Right. That dome, it's enclosed, and it gets loud in there. And they have pr- maybe the top attendance in the league. It's got to be pretty tight between them and probably two or three other teams. But <clears throat> they, um, no, I mean, I think they, they have. A, I think they have it almost a 10,000 person. Right, it's a smaller area, but like they fill it up. No, no, sorry, they sorry they have a they have close to thirty thousand people. That's come that's to the game compared to Orlando that gets about twenty thousand, and that's insane for AAF football. I mean, you look at now. Granted, the arenas sizes are different. Like the Charlotte Hornets here in Charlotte, um, I think they're eighteen to twenty thousand, um, and you you think an AAF drawing thirty thousand? That's just crazy and that's awesome for the league right and that that makes me want to support san antonio as a, in a way because those fans seem very loyal that's yeah. pretty cool right um do you think they can get back to their winning ways um uh, win against san diego in the first week they've got to beat birmingham this week because right right now san diego and um arizona it, they with wins this week, they can extend where they get, and the same with Salt Lake. I mean, they there's they're in a situation where they can't lose many more. This is only a ten uh, ten game season. Yeah. You're running out of time. We're almost right. halfway through the season. Exactly. And who would have thought three weeks in that San Diego and Arizona would be tied at the top two one, and Salt Lake and San Antonio would be tied at the bottom with one and two. Well, I think we we can agree that Salt Lake's like a very good one and two. Right. Uh, and which brings us to our last game of week three. The Salt Lake Stallions beat the Arizona Hot Shots. This is a tough one for me when I came out of uh, seeing the Green Book. 
and seeing your your updates it's it's a bit of a heartbreaker uh especially with wolford going down yeah and as much as i want to blame that you can't just blame that on them um they started slow wolford didn't play very good in the first quarter and a half he started to get it going there right before the second half and then he had his injury happen um I do believe they probably would have won the game had he stayed in there because he started to figure out the defense. And I know you've watched, I think this was the only Hot Shots game you've missed. Correct. Um, but you've noticed that when it comes to these games, he, he, he starts off slow. It's like he's trying oh, to absolutely. figure out the defense. Yeah, no, the, the first two games was essentially the same game in which they didn't have a whole lot going until essentially the second quarter. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, it seems like he gets it going with five minutes to go in the second quarter, and then there he's just clicking the rest of the game. Right. It's like, okay, I'm sure I can't really see what the defense is doing. I'm just going to have to get a feel for it here. Exactly. And um, what's good, though, is it sounds like um, he has a back strain, but it sounds like he's going to be able to um, play on Sunday um, when they play the Atlanta Legends on the NFL Network at 8 p.m. Right, right. And I, I feel, I want to say something as well. I feel it's unfair that people were bashing Trevor and I on Twitter um, to be thrown in a situation like that and not have a feel for the defense. Um, I He started off pretty bad, but by the end of the fourth, he looked a little bit better. I mean, granted, it wasn't Wolford good, but it was – decent i mean it wasn't matt sims or um hackenberg bad like it was it was all right yeah well what's interesting is is that prior to the week one game against the stallions everybody pegged knight to be the starter over wolford right and even i well from what i had read i didn't get to see any preseason or anything but from what i had read that he was actually the better performing quarterback at one time. Right. Um, I guess in the last few preseason games is when Wolford um, proved himself. And it was funny because the day of game one, when the depth charts came out, they had Trevor Knight pegged in there as the starter. And I guess they changed right before uh, game time of week one. Yeah, that was very strange. But it ended up working out the end with uh, Wolford popping off four touchdowns. Yeah, we need that again this week. If we lose to Atlanta, which we're not going to, that's my lock of the week. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and move into... Uh, Sorry for the early segment, Skip, but no, there's no, no way all, we're losing. It's all good. It's a good segue into our week three power rankings. Um, obviously, our number eight is the Atlanta Legends, correct? Agreed. Okay. Um, number seven, would you say... Uh, they're getting up there in regards to they could easily, if they beat um, the fleet this next week, yeah, they could easily move up a couple spots. So I don't, I don't think being number seven uh, for the our number seven, the Memphis Express, is not a bad thing. Right, right. And it, you got you guys that are listening know that we usually kind of do like a surprise thing where somebody alternates. Well, we have already been through this with our first podcast, so we know the list. So we're right. just going to name it off if you guys are a little confused by how we're doing it this week. Right. And then our, our number six, um, we thought would be one of the top contenders in the league. But they've dropped off a lot since week one. Um, and you had said earlier that – Teams aren't really going to gel, and you're not really going to see the real team until week five. Right. I feel like you're getting signs of what you're going to see. Like Right. So but, with our number six, the San Antonio Commanders, we talked about it earlier. It sounds like this might be what we're seeing is the team from week two and week three. And they might not be able to get it done. Even though they're playing the Birmingham Iron next week, if they're not able to get it done, they are the team (laughs) 
that we thought they were, and we left them off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I heard myself going for it. I was like, I need to go for it. Um, <laughs> so our number five, then. It uh, was the fleet. Yeah, we had we had the fleet. Um, they are two and one, but they're probably the worst two and one team between the Hot Shots and the Fleet. I yeah. would still give it to the number five, and. And here was kind of our reasoning. Um, we described it in the first podcast, um, well, so I'll give it to you here. They beat the Commanders, who haven't looked very good, and they beat the Atlanta Legends. Right. If you beat the Memphis Express with Mettenberger, you might move up. Right. I agree. Uh, which then are number four. Can we do a drum roll for this? Roll iron! Yeah, we're going to get a lot of flack for this, but they're easily the most overrated team. Just like, this is the worst town ever. <laughs> uh, SCU, uh, all the way. But yeah, the Iron are the most overrated team in the league so far, and they've shown it uh, with their... Offensive performances. Yeah, Richardson had three touchdowns in week three. But he's only had 2.7 yards per carry. Perez has not been able to get the ball off because either the defense has gotten to him or his wide receivers are dropping the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I they had who have they beat? They had a good win over Salt Lake. I'll give them that. Although Salt Lake gave the game away. Other than that, I wouldn't say it was a good win. I would say it was complete. Oh, it was an ugly ass win, and the refs had helped them. Right, with a very very bad call. I agree. The uh, ball landing on the Irons players. If that doesn't. If that doesn't happen and Salt Lake makes a few field goals, they blow them out Correct. in Birmingham. I agree. Which brings us to our number three. It hurt us, man. Arizona Hot Shots. It's, um, they beat us. They look great. They deserve the number two spot. Yeah, which we bring Salt Lake Stallions at number two. Um, they're going to be the team to beat. In week four, which they are playing our number one pick this week, Orlando Apollos. And the Steve Spurrier led Apollos. <laughs> right. I think that that could easily be the game of the week in week four because I think it will position whomever the num- real number one team is. Yep, it's the it's the big primetime game. The winner gets number one in our power rankings. Right. And as you said during the recording of the first podcast, and hopefully this will be the uh, second and last recording of this week, um, I know that we have a recording tomorrow night uh, with Hot Shot Nation, um, but it, it won't be our responsibility to record it anything. Um so, yeah, um, as you said in the first recording, uh, the Saturday night game is the game of the week. It's essentially the NFL Sunday night football. So we will have, um, I guess it was Faith Hill, I guess, carried on AAF at some point saying, it. it's Sunday night. Oh, the new version. What was the old version? Uh, I've been waiting all day for a Sunday night. All I know is, it's time for some Monday Night Football! Oh, Hank Williams. Yeah. Birmingham knows about that. I tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to our week four games. You can still hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure I didn't hit mute. Oh, that would have been bad. 
Uh, San Diego Fleet at Memphis Express, 4 p.m. on Saturday on BR Live, and it actually got flexed um, by the Orlando Apollos and Salt Lake Stallions. Fleet at Express, this is a trap game, I would say, even though the Fleet have only beaten the Commanders and the Legends. I would say it's still a trap game for the fleet, seeing as though the Express are 0 and 3. Yeah, um, that's actually my pick for this week is the Memphis Express. I think that um, Mettenberger, Mettenberger is going to be too much for the for the San Diego Fleet, and it's going to be the difference in this game. Memphis has a tremendous defense, and that's going to be the difference. I agree. Um, I I would say that, as we said in the first recording, Memphis Express, I'm going with them as well. Met, it's going to be the Mettenberger Show. Uh, moving on to our game of the week, Orlando Apollos at the Salt Lake Stallions. It's going to be brutal. And I say that because I feel like Gilbert of the Apollos has not really been tested. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, the Stallions have a great defense uh, with Schultz. That's his name, right? Yeah, uh, Carter Schultz. Yeah. Um, I think if he gets to Gilbert, it might be a long night for the Apollos. Yeah, um, I think that's going to be what's going to decide this game is can Apollo, the the Apollos, can they uh, protect their quarterback and stop the pressure because that's what Arizona could not do last week. They um, Salt Lake constantly got back there and pressured whoever was the quarterback at playing, whether it was Wolford or if it was um, uh, Trevor Knight. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, I will say I'm going Apollos, but I think it'll be super close. Yeah. Um, with that, I do go with the Apollos, despite me saying that. Um, I just... I'm just a believer in the Apollos. They have looked better overall. Um, San Antonio... I mean, Salt Lake's def- offense is still a little... I don't know. It's still a little iffy. Right. Um, But I think their defense might be able to make up for them. Um, So moving on to Sunday 4 p.m. game on CBS Sports Network. You have San Antonio Commanders at the Birmingham Iron. I'm hoping the Commanders can pull this off and show the sham that the Iron is. You think they can get it done? Yeah, I can't remember what I did on the first podcast, <laughs> but I think I think um, I think I'm gonna say the iron do squeak out another one. Yeah. So you think the commanders end up being one and three? Yes. Yeah. I do. Okay. So moving on to what's probably going to be the least watched game this weekend which very much hurts me but it's going to be the Atlanta Legends at the Arizona Hot Shots at 8pm on Sunday on the NFL Network the lock of the week obviously is our Arizona Hot Shots um, and I think this is more of a tune up game it, it is I uh... I just see them, like, just destroying them. I feel like they're going to be mad, pissed off. They're just going to come out and just come out firing. Yeah. I think that ultimately uh, they're going to go on to week five against San Antonio, and they're going to be ready. Yeah. 
Um, this is our chance to kind of redeem ourselves and gain some ground with these two uh, few games coming up before we get into the gritty and tough part of our schedule. Right. I agree. And without further ado, it's now time for the Wednesday Night Mailbag. Give me some questions. Board Dude 101010 in our AFB subreddit question thread said, after what Ebersaw and Dundon have said about week two, about the future and viability of the league economically, how concerned should we be that four out of the eight teams, half the league, is only averaging 11,000 people thus far? I'm not worried too much about it. I mean, you see the, you see what uh, teams like uh, San Antonio are doing, and I think a big reason for that is where they put some of these teams and other reasons or yeah, the size of these stadiums. Yeah, and they don't have football. They don't have football in San Antonio. No. Uh, they don't have football in Orlando. Birmingham, Salt right. Lake. Now, I will say Salt Lake, their, <laughs> their attendance was pretty disappointing, it looked like, from the pictures people had yeah. posted. And, now, and, go ahead. Now, granted, it's probably freaking cold as hell there. Right. Um... And ultimately, it's not going to be about butts and seats. It's about who's watching. Right, right. How many people are watching. And they're doing great. I think they're doing a lot better than people gave them expectations for. And it's not like the XFL is going to do any better next year. No, no. It's going to be about the same. Even the original XFL, I mean... They got 54 million people to watch first week, and then it just completely collapsed. Right, right. When it's, uh, the play got really, really bad as well. Like, a lot of those guys, some of them were just guys signed off the street. Right. Like, these are real good players. Yeah. Uh, Incredible56 says, from our uh, AFB Reddit thread, which of the current winless teams is going to win first? Obviously, the Express. Agreed. And I'll be very surprised um, if it's not the Express. Atlanta is either going to win one game or they're going to win zero is my prediction. Right. Um, Alex DeMotte, DeMott, sorry for getting your name wrong, also from the Reddit AAFB. Stars emerging on AAF teams is awesome, but they could end up moving to an NFL roster, which is a bummer for fans of AAF teams. How do you guys feel about that? I love Carter Schultz and will be a sad Stallions fan if and when he goes back to the NFL. Um, I'm mixed about it. I want to see these guys in the AAF, but at the same time, I want to see see them succeed and get more money and follow them in the NFL. Um, yeah, I'm mixed on it, but ultimately, nah, I, I would rather see the guys succeed than not make as much money in the AAF. Right, I agree. Uh, are there any AAF players you think could transition over to WWE and be successful? Carter Schultz, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And probably um, Richardson. Yeah, Trent Richardson, um, he's a big old boy. Um, if D'Angelo Williams can become a star after one match in TNA, certainly Trent Richardson can. Maybe... Um, What's the line? Or I'm trying to find what was the linebacker for Raheem Moore. Maybe Raheem Moore, the uh, linebacker for the. Um, no, he's defensive back. Uh, what linebacker am I thinking of for the Arizona Hot Shots? Oh well, it's no big deal. I, it's our football players, man. Any of these could make it. Yeah. Or I think Hackenberg could play a pretty good heel. Like so, you know the kind of character Christian played. In like early 2002, where he'd have like these major shit fits in the ring when he would lose, yes, and start taking bumps, yes. Maybe Hackenberger could just be that guy, bring that character back. That would be great. Um, what the hell happened to the Week One Commander secondary? They were going to lead us to the promised land. Who's secondary? Sorry. Commanders. Oh, the commanders? Uh, you 
you you just started playing bad. I <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, you guys look great in week one, uh, week two. Um, yeah, it just started rolling downhill. Um, I feel like the beginning of that game against Orlando, he still looked good. And that, uh, as soon as Orlando made that comeback, it felt like it was just all downhill from there. Yeah. Maybe, I guess, maybe Garrett Gilbert exposed the San Antonio defense and kind of showed two other teams what you had to do to beat that defense. Right, I agree. Um, Chris Jackson asks, is Trent Richardson the front runner for MVP this year? MVP? No, my MVP is Garrett Gilbert right now. Yeah, unless his leg explodes. Richardson... He's not going to sniff MVP. There's no way. Right. Uh, Timmy Dubs from RVA asks, any chance Vinny Testaverde replaces Hackenberg? Very good chance. Um, I would stay tuned to the next few weeks. I look forward to the, let's see how old he is. I look forward to the 55-year-old Brooklyn, New York City quarterback, Vinny Testaverde, work, work, Going in there and replacing Christian Hackenberg. Yep. Um, Kush asks, what the fuck is the AAF? <laughs> um, just watch it, man. Just watch it. Right. <laughs> uh, lifelong Salt Lake Stallions fan asks, is it horse Nathalie? Okay, as far as animals, I would consider it an athlete. Um, yeah, I guess it is. A horse could beat Usain Bolt in a race. <laughs> Didn't they do this? Uh, I, don't I know. felt like this happened. No, it was uh, Chad Ochocinco, wasn't it, that raced a horse? Uh, I don't remember this. I'll take your word for it, though. I'll have to you send it to you. Yeah. It was um, somebody. Um. Yeah, it was Chad Ochocinco. Horse beat him in a foot race. <laughs> Those are all our questions this week. Thank you, guys, for giving them, giving us those questions. Maybe you can give us some sweet ones as well for next week's episode if we're still around and I haven't burned my house down um, trying to get this episode recorded. Uh, or uh, Logan hasn't sent a assassin after me for fucking this up. We may rage quit if this doesn't go through. <laughs> this may be it, guys. Yeah. Um, closing thoughts. Uh, my bad, guys, for messing up the first recording. Otherwise, this episode would have been up Wednesday night, uh, along with our bonus episode. Um, but hopefully we can get that recorded next week, and we'll have our first bonus episode. Closing thoughts, Logan, aside from you hating me? Um, I'm st I'm stoked for the Apollos versus the Stallions this week, and I'm looking forward to Memphis and Mettenberger getting their first win. And um, other than that, um, you guys should, should support Blue Chew and buy their products. And if you guys would, tweet at Blue Chew and tell them to sponsor us. We will put them over. Give us a script. We'll put you over, guys. Yes, and subscribe to PewDiePie. Yes, yes. Uh, PewDiePie. Yes. Our favorite YouTube personality. Hopefully we can get on meme reviews soon. Just like Elon Musk was this past week. And I'm, uh, at the same time, I'm also thankful for you doing messing up on the first one, Nick, because I think this AAF version came out better, I think. Oh, I agree. And it's not going to last as long. <laughs>